For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Praise the Lord. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart. Well, amen. Open your Bible with me to John. We're in John chapter 7. We're going to try to finish up this chapter today. John chapter 7. We're going to start in verse 39. I want to encourage you to go to our website, crossboundministry.com, and send us an email. Sign up for our newsletter. And in doing so, I'll send you a free e-booklet on what happens after a Christian dies. So in John chapter 7 and verse 39, the Bible says, But this spake he of the Spirit which they that believed on him should receive for the Holy Ghost, was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Living water. Living water refers to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the key that gives you the power to live the Christian life. The, a lot of things come from the Holy Spirit. There's no question about it. The Bible tells you that the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, that there is liberty in 2 Corinthians 3.17. In Romans 15.13, it tells you that your hope and your power comes from the Holy Ghost. Man, there's nothing like hope and power. is a, And it tells you also, the Bible, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. In other words, a piece of God living and dwelling inside you, the the it is also, the Holy Spirit is also our comforter. John chapter 14, verse 16 tells us he is the comforter. He's also our teacher and teaches us all things. In John 14, 26, do you know that even the, the Holy Spirit even helps your memory? The Bible says, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit even helps you to remember. And it tells you that in John chapter 14, verse 26, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen for that. I know I need help with my memory sometimes, but the Bible says that he'll bring those things to your memory when you need them. And that's where we get our power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. And that tells you in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And even prophecy, even prophecy, read 2 Peter 1 21. For the prophecy came not in old time, but by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hey, there's a lot of great and wonderful and mighty and powerful things come from the Holy Spirit. And that is the key to living the Christian life. That is the key to doing God's work is listening and obeying the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So that's what the Bible is talking about there, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Verse 39 is a very important because it teaches you that all who receive the Lord Jesus Christ shall also receive the Spirit of God at the moment of conversion. No, it doesn't wait. You don't have to wait for it to come. No, the Bible says that you, when you're born again, a piece of God moves inside of you. It doesn't come at a different time or down the road or you have to wait for it or ask for it. No, you receive it at the moment of salvation. Absolutely. And so the next verse says, John chapter 7 and verse 40, many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, this is the prophet, verse 41. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? A many who listened were now convinced that the Lord Jesus was that prophet 
that Moses had spake of. Yeah, absolutely, he did. Others were even willing to acknowledge that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. But some thought, hey, this is no way. That's not going to happen. This just this is impossible. They believed that Jesus came from Nazareth and Galilee, and there was no prophecy in the Old Testament that was Christ who would come out of the Galilee. But they they just didn't believe. They chose not to believe that he was the Christ, as many will today. They chose not to believe. Do you? What do you choose to believe? Because it's an active of the will that you choose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he wants each and every person to be saved, but it is a personal choice. 2 Peter 3, 9 tells you the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants every person to repent, but it's your choice to do it. It most certainly is. Many are scared of that election, but listen, God did not elect anyone to go to hell or anyone to go to heaven. He gives you that choice. And I ask you, what will you choose? Verse 42, hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Hey, these Jews were right in believing that the Christ would come from the town of Bethlehem and be descended from David. Now, if you look at the line of Jesus, there is so many people in there that you would say there's no way that those people are in the family line of Jesus. We're talking about harlots and people that messed up and people that committed murder and people that, but those, that is the line that Jesus came through, the line of of David. If they had just taken a trouble to inquire, they would have found that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and that he was a direct descendant of David through Mary. Amen. The line of Jesus. Jesus loves to use those that others throw away. Jesus loves to grab, to gravitate those, the one that the society shuns, the one that they turn their back on. They're nothing. They're nobody. They'll never amount to nothing. They don't make no sense. Hey, Jesus loves to go to them and sit with them and sup with them and make them his own just like he did the woman at the well the woman that everybody turned their back of the woman that had five husbands and was living with somebody that was not her husband the ones that no jew would ever talk to hey jesus went to her and made him made her a follower of him why with his love with his compassion with his care and that is what you have got to show people when you want them to be a follower of the lord jesus christ show them that you care show them how much jesus cares and let jesus use you to do it amen verse 43 So there was a division among the people because of him. Hey, man, hey, when Jesus shows up, he brings a revival or he brings a riot. Hey, Jesus caused a lot of division. And now he's not doing it on purpose or out of meanness. No, sir. No, ma'am. He even said, think not that I come to bring peace. So those that think Jesus was just this peaceful, wants everybody to have peace and everybody to get along. No, Jesus made it clear. I come not to bring peace, but a sword, but a sword. In other words, he's a line drawn in the sand that parts families, that parts people, that parts, why? Because some choose to believe and some don't he said so there was division among the people because of him because of jesus and because of these differing opinions and because of their general ignorance there was division on among the people about christ and it's still the same today and it'll be the same tomorrow and it'll be the same until jesus come back men and women are divided on the subject of jesus jesus's name is an offense to many people but jesus's name is also a savior to many 
people. It is your choice what he is to you. He wants to be your savior. Some say he was just simply a man like the rest of us. And others will admit that, hey, he was a great man. Hey, he laid down his life. Hey, he was a good man, but they don't believe he's the Christ. They don't believe he is the savior of the world. But those who believe the word of God, the Bible, those that believe God's word, they know, they know, they know that he is God in the flesh and that he is over all and they are the eternally blessed. You read Romans 9, 5 and see what it says. He is over all. He has power over all. And so those that believe the Bible, that believe God's word, they know that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. I ask you, what will you believe? Where will you put your faith and trust? In yourself? In a book? In something you said? Or a saying? Social media? TV? Programs? Documentaries? Science? No. Where will you put your faith in? Will you put it in God's holy word? The thing that never changes? It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall endure forever, the Bible says. Amen. It never changes. And you can put your faith in something when it never changes. You know where it came from. You know where it's going. You know it never changes. I can trust it. Amen. You know that's something you can trust when it never changes. And that is the Bible, God's holy word. You know that God even holds his word above his own name in the book of Psalms. He says, hey, my name is not as important as my word. Now that's saying something, isn't it? That my word is more important than my own name. Amen to that. That's how much emphasis God puts on his word. John chapter 7 and verse 44. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. As long as a person is walking in the will of God, doing the work of God, there is no power on earth that can stop you unless the Lord Jesus Christ allows it and God allows it. But you know what? God allows his work to be done. Amen. So as long as you are in the will of God, working for God, there is nothing, no power on earth that can stop you because the hand of God is upon you. Amen. Oh, they might take your life one day. They might destroy you as your name. They might drag you through the mud, but it is not going to stop the work of God if you are walking in the will of God. Amen. Amen to that. I can trust my God. I can trust my Savior. When all else fails you, when everybody else fails, everybody else walks away and turns their back on you or drags your name through the mud. Amen. You can trust God because his work will be done. That does not mean you're special. No, that means that he is special. Amen. That's why he's allowing his work to be done because he is special. Not me, not you, but he is. It's all about him. The Lord's time, see, the Lord's time had not yet come. And so men, they were they were unable to put their hands on him. They were unable to harm him. And that's why at the end of verse 44, it tells you, no man laid hands on him. His time had not yet come. In verse 45, then came the officers to the chief priest and Pharisees. And they said unto them, why have ye not brought him? Verse 46, the officers answered, never a man spake like this man. What? What do you mean never a man spake like this man? Now I want you to think about present day right now today. Today, if a judge were to sign a warrant and he gave that warrant to law enforcement and he sent the law enforcement out, man, the SWAT team, all canine units, all patrol men, everybody to them, go get them. And they, they go out and they come back to the judge and all they have to show is that warrant in their hand. And the judge says, what? Where is he at? I know you saw him. And they said, well, never a man spake like this man. You say, what? That's crazy. Yes, it is crazy. But those are the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus are God's word. Amen. And you cannot dispute God's 
word. They their memorable words were no man ever spake like this man. They were just befumbled. They did not know what to say. Why? The Bible says the word of God can cut to the joint and to the marrow, right to the heart. Now, I want you to think of that. All the stuff that law enforcement hears when they go out. I mean, can you imagine all the stuff a police officer has to deal with? All the lies. Everybody's lying to them. All the storytelling. All the things that people say to them. All the stuff that happens. All, all the, the, the bad things that they have to deal with. Because they have to deal with a lot of people and on that person's worst day. Because they're going to go to jail. Amen. And so you think of all the things that those officers have heard. But when they come to Jesus, they said, never a man spake like this man. They had never heard anyone speak with such authority, with such grace, and with such wisdom as the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when he speaks, it can stop you in your tracks. Verse 47, then answered them the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? Verse 48, have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? Now, I think they were trying to intimidate these officers, the Pharisees were kind of mocking them, kind of putting them down, kind of running. What? You came back and said, no man spake like this man. Are you deceived too? Has he just, just totally pulled the wool over your eyes too? And so the Pharisees accused them of being deceived by Jesus. Hey, these, these Pharisees, they were not Un, they were unwilling to believe on the Lord Jesus himself. But it's clear that they did not want others to believe on him neither. They didn't want nobody else to believe, and they wasn't going to believe. And so it is today. When you have an unbeliever, a lot of times they don't want anybody else to believe neither. They will do everything in their power to talk them out of it. Many who do not want to see someone else save do everything in their power to prevent their relatives or friends from also being saved. But wait a minute, I'm not running those people down. I am not putting them down because it is a spiritual battle. There is a spiritual war going on behind the scenes that you cannot see with your physical eyes. You have got to see it with your spiritual eyes. That's what the Bible says, amen. There is a war going on. Now you think about a war today that you can see with your physical eyes. There is bomb bombs and hand grenades and people being killed and shot and assassinated and attacked and run over and blown up. Hey, that is going on in the spiritual world, but you cannot see it with your physical eyes. You have to see it with your spiritual your spiritual eyes and ask God to give you wisdom to see it. So I'm not condemning those people that try to talk other people out of getting saved. Why? Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rules of the darkness of this world. You can't even see them, but yet you're wrestling with them, yet they're trying to deceive you, yet they're running you down, yet they're doing everything that they can to stop someone from getting and saved even is going as far as getting a person that's unsaved to talk to another person that's not saved hey you don't want to get saved you don't want jesus hey you don't want nothing to do with that why because there is a spiritual battle a spiritual war going on behind the scenes that you cannot see with your physical eyes so please ask the lord to give you wisdom to see those things when you are talking to people verse 49 but this people who knoweth not the law, are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. Do you remember the story of Nicodemus who come to Jesus by night? He was the one that came to him and learned and asked him what, what he must do, what he must what be born again. It would appear that the Nicodemus here had actually trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and that he had been saved because here and this verse here all of a sudden, now do you think about this, Nicodemus steps forward when all this is going on among the rulers, among the Pharisees, among the Jews to say something. He's going to kind of stand up for Jesus. Amen. Talk about sticking his neck out and he was for Jesus. Verse 51. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know 
what he doeth. And here Nicodemus, he his point was that the Jews had not even given Jesus a fair chance, not given Jesus a fair trial. They were going to uh, con- con- condemn him right there without any trial, without even giving him a chance to speak. And the Jewish law did not judge a man before he heard his case. Just like here in America today, you get the chance of due process. You're supposed to have an honest, open case with a speedy trial. Amen. That's what he's saying here. Is this not fair? This goes against our law. You're attacking this man. You are going to condemn him and convict him without him even saying a word. Nicodemus steps up for Jesus. So it appears to me that Nicodemus was saved and he got born again because you don't do that naturally. You don't naturally stick your neck out for somebody else. No, but it appears to me that he was really believed on Jesus. And yet that was what the Jewish leaders were doing here at this point. They were condemning Jesus. They wanted to convict Jesus without any chance of a fair trial. Let me ask you something. Were they afraid of the facts? Yes, they were. I believe that with all my heart. They didn't want Jesus to speak because they were afraid of the facts. And the answer was obviously that they were They were afraid of the facts because they wouldn't let him speak. They were going to condemn him and convict him. And here, Nicodemus steps up for him and says, well, wait a minute. You can't, that's not right. Not even in your own law, much less we're talking about Jesus here. Even your own law won't allow you to do that. Verse 52, they answered and said unto him, art thou also of Galilee? Search and look for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet." Hey, they stopped and they turned on Nicodemus. And let me just tell you, when you stand up for Jesus in this world, they're going to stop and they're going to turn on you too. But stand your ground. Hey, even if we get killed here for preaching God's word, don't you let it stop you. Amen. Death, because the apostle Paul said, oh, death, where is thy sting? It is gone once you're saved, once you're born again. The Bible even says death is glorious. Oh, death, where is thy sting? That you'll be with God but in a moment. So if you, when you stand up for Jesus, you can expect the world to turn on too. And so you know they asked him that with a sneer. They, they turned on him. If he was alone, if he was the one of Jesus from the Galilee, did he not know that the Old Testament spoke of no prophet in Galilee? But you know what? Here, these rulers, they showed their true ignorance, even of the Old Testament, that they had not read that the prophet Jonah had come from Galilee. Obviously, they weren't studying the scripture that they supposedly knew and were supposed to be teachers of. Amen. Because that's where Jonah came from. Read it for yourself. Amen. They were attacking Nicodemus and they were attacking Jesus. And like I said, the world will turn on you too. Amen. Verse 53 and every man went unto his house the feast of the tabernacles were over and the men returned to their homes some had met the savior face to face and trusted him and others had met the savior face to face and rejected him. Hey, they saw him in the flesh, but yet they still rejected him. Hey, many today will reject him. Don't you let that stop you from preaching God's word. Don't let that stop you or hinder you from living the Christian life. Amen. I know there's a lot of bad going on, but there's a lot of good too. You keep on living it. Keep on preaching it. Keep on witnessing. Keep on telling it. Keep on passing out tracts. Amen. Do it for the Lord Jesus. Not for you. Not for me, not for the church, not for anybody else. But hey, when you do it for the Lord, you won't give up. You'll keep right on. Your strength will come from the Lord. Amen. You keep right on going. The majority had rejected Jesus here. Yeah, they had. And the leaders of the Jewish people were more determined than ever to do away with him. They were tired of him. But hey, many had believed on him. But they considered Jesus a threat as many do today. But listen, you don't have to. Where have you put your faith and trust in? Put it in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. 
1-800-242-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.